Welcome to the U.S. Daily Brief channel. After the failure of the great Ukrainian invasion, Putin continues to attack Donbass with all his might, which he set as his target. However, although Russia has tried all kinds of military strategies for three and a half months, it cannot achieve success in Donbass. While Putin tries to understand why the Russian army is so desperate to conquer Donbass, the losses of the Russian army against the Ukrainian armed forces are constantly increasing. Even if the deployment of the most competent Russian troops and the most powerful tanks in the region raises Putin's hopes, the strong resistance of the Ukrainian army in Donbass is destroying the morale of the Russian army and the separatists. In the ongoing war in Ukraine, another Russian tank column, which carried out an operation in the Donbass region, was the target of the special artillery force of the Ukrainian armed forces. This added to the thousands of tanks that Russia lost in the region and caused the losses to grow to an irreparable level. The defenders of Ukraine destroyed a column of Russian tanks moving in the east of the country with devastating precision artillery fire in a well-planned ambush. Footage of the attack was released by the armed forces of Ukraine. It was stated that in the attack carried out by the K-2 Special Forces Unit of the 54th Mechanized Brigade, Russian tanks were blown up one by one in Donetsk Marinka. When the shared images were carefully examined, dark clouds rose to cover the sky after the artillery attack and a T-72B tank that was engulfed in flames was clearly seen. The remains of the tank were later shared on social media. As can be seen from the shared images, the attack separated the molecules of the T-72B tank and dispersed it. Ukraine frequently uses long-range artillery strikes in the Donbass region, severely punishing enemy targets from long ranges. This Russian column, which carries out an operation in the city of Donetsk Marinka, has also received its share of artillery attacks. The military group later posted on social media, another success, tourists in the Donbass region are missing their armored vehicles. They mocked the Russian troops and continued, Dear compatriots, we continue to show you another journey of our uninvited tourists, wandering the deserted streets on the outskirts of Marinka, Donetsk region. A traveler of nearby tourists drove their heavy prohibition carts into the narrow streets of the city. Here, men from the K-2 Special Reconnaissance Group made planned repairs with the help of other workers. After meeting our repair equipment, tourists' cars break down as usual and a car will have to be taken off the road for spare parts, it was said. The invasion attempt, which the Kremlin still describes as a special military operation, is about to leave its 104th day behind, and the Russian army still has not achieved the desired level of operational success. Their small advances in the Donbass are met with reprisals each time by the Ukrainian armed forces, and the exhausted Russian soldiers are forced to retreat behind their own military borders. The Ukrainian general staff reports that the Russian army has lost a total of 31,360 military personnel, 1,390 tanks, 3,416 armored combat vehicles, 694 artillery systems, 207 multiple launch rocket systems, 96 anti-aircraft systems, 212 warplanes, 177 helicopters and 13 ships to date. When we pay attention to the numbers of losses caused to Russia by the superior Western weapons in the hands of the Ukrainian special forces, it is observed that the Russian army has fallen into a terrible loss and it infuriates Putin. Compensation for these losses seems almost impossible when we look at the industrial progress in Russia at the moment. The Russian industry, which is completely stuck on spare parts, is waiting for the spare parts to come from the West. But that seems unlikely because for that, Vladimir Putin would have to tuck his tail and return home. Most of the civil industrial sites in Russia have already closed their shutters. The Russian Ministry of Defense, on the other hand, continues to threaten Ukraine and carry out threatening operations, despite the losses it has suffered. In a statement made by the Russian Ministry of Defense in the past days, Yars mobile missile systems, which can carry nuclear warheads and have a range of over 10,000 kilometers, said that they carried out intense maneuvering operations on the combat patrol routes in Ivanovo. The announcement by the Russian Ministry of Defense of a movement in this region to the east of Moscow was clearly perceived as a threat. Russia has continued to make nuclear threats since the beginning of the war. In the first days of the invasion of Ukraine, 
Putin called out to European states and announced that if Russia interfered with the special operation in Ukraine, a war would break out and that Russia would not be the only loser in this war. Since then, Russian officials have been implicitly trying to threaten Europe and other Ukraine-supportive countries with Russia's nuclear power. But these threats are hardly valid. So far, no country has directly intervened in the war in Ukraine, and they only supplied the Ukrainian army with weapons, which does not mean that a country should intervene in the war. The success here is entirely due to the brave patriotic soldiers of the Ukrainian armed forces and the armed Ukrainian people. Thanks to the West's sending of weapons to Ukraine, it can replenish its military arsenal and Ukraine can get back its rightful freedom and country. However, such a situation seems unlikely for Russia. Russia has earned the hatred not only of Eastern Europe but also of many countries of the world and is currently unable to procure spare parts for its military industry and replenish its military arsenal. Putin is now sending the old T-62 tanks that our great-great-grandfathers used in World War II to Ukraine to fight, and this is the biggest proof of Putin's helplessness. Putin continues to seek new remedies in the shadow of his tanks crushed in Ukraine. Although Russia has thousands of tanks in its warehouses, it is known that most of these tanks are old-fashioned rusty tanks from the early Cold War era. One of these tanks, the T-62, has been cleaned by Russia and is expected to be polished to make up for Russia's lack of armor on the front lines. So is this possible? Let's try to examine this issue in depth together. T-62 tanks, over 60 years old, were spotted on a train at the Melitopol train station in southeastern Ukraine. The images were shared, and in the report published immediately after, it was stated that there were over 10,000 Russian tanks and 8,500 armored vehicles in Russian warehouses. But at least 25% of these tanks are T-62 tanks. These tanks may have a small effect on the war in the region, but the use of these ex-Soviet tanks in the region can be cited as evidence of Putin's growing despair. T-62 tanks were launched in 1961. It played an active role in the Cold War in those years, but today it would not be wrong to describe these tanks as old and ugly. Diesel engines have a total of 580 horsepower and can reach speeds of up to 50 km per hour. Considering the 41-ton size of this T-62, it seems that the tank has become a very slow and easy target to fire. In an area where Ukraine can easily hit the latest model T-72B3 and even T-90 tanks, the function of these tanks can be reduced to almost zero. The armor on the front of the tank is 100 mm thick and appears durable. However, there are armors half the thickness of this on the sides. In this case, it means that the Javelin and Stunya P anti-tank guided missiles, which became legendary in the Ukraine war, could easily destroy this tank. In other words, not only long-range artillery attacks, but also portable anti-tank missiles can easily destroy T-62s in the region. This makes it meaningless to send the tank to the region. So why does Putin want to send these tanks? There can be multiple answers to this. First of all, these tanks can be used as bait, but where to find military personnel to drive a tank that is bait, or which soldier agrees to be bait on the territory of another country for the sake of a leader's ambitions? especially when the meaninglessness of war for many Russian soldiers is circulating on the tongues. At the same time, considering that the T-62 tanks are probably rusty due to years of being outside in the rain and snow, what confidence will these tanks provide to the soldier? The already broken faith of the soldiers can be left to be completely destroyed with this tank, and the Russian army, which we often see in Ukraine, can leave the tanks and run away. One plus of the T-62 is that they don't have modern computers and electronics, so they'll likely have little training for the reserve troops called in. However, in the modern world, a tank without electronic systems like the T-62 cannot sense what is going on around it. The Russians may have no maneuver plans for the T-62. They can keep them in tow for defensive positions where they will dig and not move based solely on the 115mm gun gripping the terrain. This is possible in a defensive position. But, as we said above, even if Russian soldiers are recruited into the new army, they may refuse to be the target of Ukraine's unmanned aerial vehicles, portable anti-tank missiles or long-range artillery by getting into these tanks. The Russian T-62 tanks, which were reported to appear on the front lines especially in the Donbass region, 
also show us the helplessness of the Russian army in the Donbass and why it is 